okay, okay. Hmm. Not even close. What happened? So I'll go ahead and tell you and warn you right now, no riding in this video. You guys probably saw it in the last video. I have tennis elbows super bad in both arms. Doing the right thing. I probably should have uh, stopped a little earlier when I noticed that I had the pain and uh, gone immediately to start doing rehab. But I waited a little bit and so now I'm paying a price. So hopefully I'll be on the bike in a couple of weeks. All right, as you can see in the intro, I did end up ordering a new tire for the rear of this bike as you can see it is still seeping uh, sealant on the sidewall pretty bad so I may have permanently damaged this sidewall of this tire somehow or either it was a manufacturing defect I'm not sure so I'm gonna put a new uh, dual compound wide trail uh, minion DHR2 on the back of this bike and I had ordered one from Amazon a couple of days ago and somehow I ended up getting a 29 inch aggressor and it's 2.5 wide i mean just everything about it's wrong so i ended up having to send that back so i have another one on order but uh, i am going to try and uh, get a new tire on here and see if it does any better uh, it's just i mean all the sealant that i had in this tire it's probably gone you know just it's just one week later so um, i don't want to have to deal with that hopefully so you can see it's still um, all of these white marks here it's kind of, uh, it's crazy how much sealant this thing is leaking out the sidewall and it's, it's everywhere. So if you didn't see the original video, go back into my playlist there. Um, last week's video was about this particular topic in general. So I'm not, I'm not that pleased. And as you can see at the knobby profile on this, the tires got a lot of life left on it. And that's such a shame. But anyhow, let's get to today's topic. Today, talking about my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson. This bike's 15 months old now, and it is time for me to do an initial impression update of this bike. How does it stack up to what my initial impressions were? We'll talk about that today, along with component changes and any weight changes that came along with this bike. That's right, we're gonna put it back on the scale and see how it adds up to when I initially received this bike from competitive cyclists. And I'll also talk about some vulnerable spots on this bike's frame, so stay tuned. All right, I've got my trusty handy dandy park tool scale here. Yep, looks like it still works. So what do you say we put the bike back on the scale and we'll get a weight and we'll compare it to what it was back when I initially weighed this bike back in July of 2018. All right, so let's see what the, the outcome is. So we're at 32 pounds, seven ounces, and for you folks in all the other countries, 14.7 uh, kilos. So this bike actually picked up some weight. And uh, the initial weight of this bike when I purchased it was 31 and a half pounds. Yeah, almost 14 ounces of weight since the last time I weighed it. I'll put a clip up here of, uh, of the weight of me weighing this bike when I initially received it. It just settled down, 31 pounds, eight ounces of you in the metric nations it's about 14.32 kilograms so let's talk a little bit about some of the component changes and i'll start uh at the at the front here and, and go back so as you recall i did a couple of videos on this i actually replaced the race face uh aluminum bars that came on the bike with the santa cruz carbon bars which um I, you know the, these bars actually weighed lighter than the race faces but uh you know obviously we picked up weight in some other areas um, i did my initial impression on these bars they've been awesome i really love the feel of carbon handlebars um, for my arms it just it gives you that kind of it's more of a dampened feel when you uh when you're riding over bumps it just it just feels more kind of of a natural vibration in your arms so but we'll talk a little bit more later 
uh, when I start talking about uh, vulnerable spots on the bike, I'm going to include the bars and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. So stay tuned. So the next thing that we actually did on this bike was uh, I replaced the performance, the Fox 36 performance with this 36 performance elite. So we picked up a little bit of weight on the forks, uh, but I really wanted the opportunity to have the extra compression control here on the uh, or the low speed and high speed compression controls here on the fork and uh, with the fit four damper you get that ability but with the performance fork you did not get that extra adjustability so um, that is one of the first things that I actually did now I opted for the performance elite versus the factory i had factory on my santa cruz 5010 i ended up selling those and that funded the uh um to, to actually buy these performance elite forks uh as far as stiction goes i couldn't really tell a difference between the black coating here and the, the uh kashima coating of the uh, factory forks so you know i'm not a professional i'm sure folks that you know ride all day every day and uh, are more professional than i am maybe able to tell the difference but I, I just couldn't tell the difference and i think the black just kind of went with the theme of this bike uh more so than the kashima coating so that was the first change that we did or the second change that we did other than the santa cruz carbon bars the third change was we went to a i9 enduro 305 wheel instead of the race face arc wheels that came on it and so we probably um, picked up a little bit of weight in that scenario uh, but not much um, the i9s are pretty light for what you get and i can tell you if you've never ridden uh i, I and i'm sure carbon wheels are kind of similar but if you've never ridden a uh, industry nine wheel set jump on somebody that has one on their bike and you can immediately tell the difference in stiffness uh, it's not too harsh but it's not as soft as a traditional uh, aluminum rim so uh, if you get an opportunity to do that do so but that was one of the first things that i upgraded i've been running i9s on most of my bikes now and i just love them so these are the enduro 305 series and so they're i think they're around 30 millimeter internal rim width um yes 30.5 millimeter as stated right there uh, into 27.5 so that was the third update i made obviously i put a set of one up plastic pedals on it did not change the seat out still have the same seat did not change out the rear shock um, this is the deluxe r edition of the rock shocks uh, shock and uh, although i would love to have the additional compression changes i just there's something about there seem to be a lot of people having problem with the rct dampers um, so i have not changed out my shock yet um, the, a lot of people were talking about their rcts losing air pressure over time i have not had a problem with this particular shock yet so i'm just going to keep it on there i will talk about uh, a little bit why this shock I, I i am not able to actually get enough air in it given the volume spacers that i like in order for this bike not to squat and i think that's a problem so i'll probably look at trading this shock out at some point in time but it is what it is i'll talk a little bit about the rideability in in a little bit later all right and uh, um, by the way this was a medium frame bicycle um so when you when we're talking about weights here just kind of keep that in mind obviously the i9 wheel set on the back as well but uh the other major change that i did was the um i put a fox transfer dropper on here with the internal routing instead of the rock shocks reverb and i gotta be honest with you you can go back and watch the video even when i received this bike the rock shock the the hydraulic line was pinched inside the frame already and it was just a pain in the butt and so I ended up just kind of ripping that out and trying a Fox transfer. When I initially weighed this bike, I had on a 9.8 fall line dropper post, which I really loved back in the day. The problem with those are that they started developing air leaks and between hot and cold environments, you had to do too much adjusting of the cable 
and it just became just tedious work and so i ended up selling my 9.8 dropper post and i think they are definitely a little bit lighter than the fox transfer but i've had zero issues with this fox transfer i'm in, super happy with it and i paired it up with a wolf tooth uh um a dropper lever here and it's been phenomenal as well and i haven't i haven't had to adjust anything on this fox transfer post yet so i'm pretty excited about that one more change uh that i did do is on the rear derailleur here it came with uh gx eagle and i ended up replacing the derailleur with an xo version of the SRAM der derailleur because and only because i had a spare one that i took off of my santa cruz 5010 and i just moved it over to this bike and uh, supposedly it's a little bit lighter than the gx but uh, so there's the component changes and the updates made to the bike now Okay, so the other addition I made to this bike is the one up chain guide with, uh, and I selected the chain guide with the integrated uh, chain ring protection. So that's an additional weight that uh, some of the components I added to this bike as well. I've had zero ch chain drop. All right, so let's talk about rideability of this bike. And look, I'm no professional mountain biker by any means, right? But for the average person that's buying this bike and going out and he's the weekend warrior or riding, you know, four or five times a week, this may be some good information for you to have, especially if you are looking to get into a Bronson and uh, know what to expect, especially versus coming from like a 5010. So let's talk a little bit about that. And the first thing I want to mention is, is that when I first when I first uh, received this bike, the first thing that I did was I started to just kind of get used to it and I took it out on a few trails. Um, there are some cross country trails, a lot, you know, somewhat, some steep climbing, but rocky, rooty trails. And I did a few videos. Is the Bronson the solution to the single bike quiver? Is uh, does the Bronson ride well on XC trails? Can a Bronson climb? So understanding that I came from a 2018 Santa Cruz 5010, and back in 2018 and a couple of years before that, the uh, seat tube angles on bikes were really slack, and they were as slack as the head tube angles were and for me it started getting a little bit out of control it felt like you were sitting way too back and you couldn't really get a lot of lean on the front to get that traction on the front tire that you really needed and i think the industry kind of caught up and the frame started changing and obviously in 2019 santa cruz really steepened up the seat tube angle on this bike and wow what a difference coming from that 5010 I had a very hard problem keeping the 2018 5010 planted uh, on climbs uh, and also for those steep and tight uh, switchbacks it was very difficult to control it just never felt right boy the Bronson really solved a lot of that I mean this thing pedals like a dream compared to that 2018 5010 now this is just my opinion on it I've heard other people say they really like the 2018 5010, but I think for me and the way that I sit on a bike, that steep uh, or slack seat tube angle was just a bit too much for me. So I really like the updates that they've made to the frame, uh, especially starting in 2019. And I wanted a little bit more travel and ended up going to the Bronson. So I can tell you this, I still feel the same way about this bike as I did when I first had my initial impressions. I'm still wowed by how well it does on all terrain uh, climbing rocks roots going down going up tight switchbacks i'm very impressed uh, i'm super impressed with the rideability of the and and the way the bike feels in general and i think there's a couple of factors to this number one it was my first carbon bike so it's the first experience i've had on a carbon fiber framed bike um, all of my bikes were AL bikes before that and I can tell you this the one thing that I am super pumped about I've had this bike for 15 months now I have not had one single squeak out of the frame or any of the components that insert into the frame of this bike I don't know if it's just the carbon fiber or if I was just unlucky on a lot of the AL bikes that I had but those squeaks 
and creaks would drive me crazy and I'm kind of anal retentive about those things on my bikes because I really do think they kind of tell a story about the health of the bike and I was chasing those things down all the time on those bikes and uh, on this frame I don't know if it's the difference in components but I have not, you know crossed my fingers I have not had a single issue and uh, the linkage bolts uh, in the 5010s that I had were always a problem and they would always creak and you would have to uh, remove those, clean them up and uh, re-lock tight, re-grease the threads depending on what the manufacturer's suggestions was. And I was doing that you know, every 10, 12, 15 hours. So it just become a maintenance nightmare. And to be honest with you, I haven't touched this bike yet. All right, so the other thing I will mention about rideability of this bike, for me, I've had one problem adjusting to this particular frame. And that problem is I have never I just haven't got comfortable with putting all of my weight uh, or uh, putting a lot of weight on the front wheel yet and I think I mentioned this earlier I think a part of it is because the bike is squatting a little bit because of the rear shock and and my weight is actually carried further back or when you hit a turn and you try to kind of put that pressure on the outside pedal to get those knobs to dig into the turns what I feel is is that my weight is actually centered further back off the bike and the front wheel will wash or wander at times and I have to really really um, think about when I get into a turn getting my weight forward now part of that may be because of the short stem and the wider handlebars and and all of that stuff but I'm not convinced of that. I think um, these bikes are a little bit longer. I think I'm stretched out a little bit more. And I still think for some reason the shock is having me uh, kind of pitched back a little bit. And so I think it's squatting just a hair. And I think if I can find out how to lift that rear end up just a little bit, it'll push my weight a little bit more forward on those turns. And uh, I'll really be able to put some weight on that front tire to get some traction in the corner. So. I really need to play with the adjustments on the shock more, specifically the air pressure. Um, so that's that's the second impression I get from this bike. The third impression is is that now that I've been riding this bike, I kind of know where the vulnerabilities are on the frame, so to speak. And so I want to talk a little bit about that because I think when I purchased this bike, they didn't have a protection kit that was specifically cut out for this bike yet. And I ended up getting, you know, uh, one for a Nomad. And uh, while some of the protection fit, there were some parts that I didn't get on the bike. And I'm kind of wishing I did now because I have a little bit of what I think is just um, just superficial damage. But when you're talking about a carbon frame here, um, you want to be careful there and uh, minimize the dings to the surface. Uh, again, this is not the expensive carbon fiber frame. This is just the carbon C model, which is uh, is the step down from the carbon CC. So, uh, so let's talk about some of the vulnerable spots on this frame. And some of this information has come in from viewers. Um, of the channel and that they've sent me messages and saying that they've had you know certain problems in certain areas and uh, a, a lot of this is also the information that I've just collected and I'll show you the proof here on the bike so let's start out by talking about carbon handlebars so this has kind of been an issue this is actually the second set of carbon handlebars I've had on this bike and on both sets the clamps from the SRAM co code brakes um, have eat into the outer finish of these handlebars to a degree where I thought it was uh, not safe and so what I've done is end up putting some uh, and it's all kind of bubbled up now I didn't do a really good job but ended up putting some helicopter tape under the uh, the clamps on both sides to kind of mitigate that problem one of the things that uh, a viewer kind of led me on to and I noticed too is is that you got to be careful around let's see if I can get some light on this got to be careful around the entry and exit points of the cable um, it is very easy for paint to chip off and if it gets chipped off to where the carbon fiber is exposed and you happen to hit that um, 
you know, I don't know what the outcome would be, but it's not good. But I think there was a problem with the with the with the process or the paint or having the paint stick. You can see I've got a chip here with this cable entry point already. Um, you also need to check um, anywhere that they don't have these rubber grommets. Uh, you need to check that. And I think you know, I believe Santa Cruz should probably look at putting some rubber grommets up at the entry points at the front too in the future. And if they don't, I would suggest that uh, you probably do something like that back here on the back where the cables come out. So you want to check. So this is the one for the rear brake and then also check around the hole there for the shifter as well. And check around where it comes out of the down tube as well here and the other thing is is that uh, like i said they didn't have a frame protection kit for this particular frame when i got it they do now obviously and, and i probably need to go back and get it so but i've just been adding helicopter tape um, to areas as i see and i can tell you anywhere on the triangle back here in the rear triangle you need to put protection wherever you can um, i noticed i started getting some bad scarring here and I don't think it was from my shoes. I think it was some rocks and stuff flying out. So I added an additional piece of tape here. And then you can see now that I've developed a new scratch there on the triangle that I need to put some, uh, put some protection tape on as well. So anywhere in this area of this triangle obviously is very vulnerable to rock strikes and uh, just debris flying up. And... I would say both inside and out um, protect those thoroughly as well as you know it's not enough just to have the chain guard on but that just takes care of some of the chain slap but you're going to get some strikes up in this area and uh, just to be cautious it, it would uh, bode well if you do that protection and i would do it on both sides as well uh, the other thing is um, inside and i mentioned this in uh, in the previous video i have some damage inside of the triangle let's see if i can get a good picture of it inside of the triangle down in here in the shock tunnel so let's see so i don't know if you can see that or not but see this damage up in the shock tunnel here um, that is part of the kit that I don't think would fit on the bike and I did not want to uh, Remove the shock when I first got the bike because I wanted to really just kind of ride it and see how it felt But anywhere inside that shock tunnel you really need to put some protective tape around it And so what I'm going to do is before I go back riding this bike I'm actually drop the shock off of it check out the linkage make sure everything is clean and uh, looks good and then I'm gonna put some tape back on that area and I think what happened was some, either a rock or a stick got caught between the triangle and the shock tunnel there and uh, it's just kind of chewed up the outside of it so be careful on those spots as well and especially be careful on any interface where brake calipers go it's easy for paint and stuff to chip off and uh, so just be careful there like this area here And I would also say up under the triangles, I've got some good layer protect protection on there. That was part of the kit. So you definitely want to make sure that it wraps around under those triangles as well and get some protection in there. Now my down tube has fared fairly well. Um, I do have protection all across the, the down tube here as well as Santa Cruz also had these uh, protective rubber covers that uh, wrap around the bottom uh, the one spot I missed was down here right where the bottom bracket uh, flanges and you can see it's chipped off there and so just throw some helicopter tape on there or some protective tape on there as well and that, that should uh, keep you good there um, repeated rub from boots and I don't know whatever but I noticed right here around this uh, linkage bolt, um, I've got some some scrapes. Um, it could be from shoes. I don't know. It just uh, just an area to kind of take note of. And then the last area I want to talk about is right here on top of the shock. Um, if you have anything mounted to these screws, 
and I did I used to carry a light here and sometimes I still do uh, if it starts to rub up against this frame here at the bottom uh, if it extends past the screws and just with the natural vibrations it starts to rub and it can actually rub through the paint and the surface here so be very careful about what you mount on these uh, two bolts here and make sure it's not rubbing up against your frame and if it's really close you probably want to put some protection tape on there and i think this is true for any bike and it's not just this frame but i'm especially cautious about this frame because it is carbon fiber it's the first carbon fiber frame that i've had so i want to be really careful about it those have been the most vulnerable areas do yourself a favor go ahead and put you some protection tape on there before uh before that occurs all right party people hope you enjoyed the content you know what to do till next time Skill up and ride, van up and go.